Hi, this is Rich Harrington, and welcome to another edition of Photoshop for Video. Today, we're going to look at a staple in broadcast design, and that is the lower third. In this first part, we're going to talk about designing the bar and really how to work in some texture so we can move beyond those clunky days of just using gradients. Let's see how. One thing that I like to do when working in my Photoshop document is to put a photo back there for reference. So I'll often put a piece of video or a clip or a still frame or even just a headshot back there so I have something to design within relationship to what we're actually working on. Now, the first thing we're going to need for our lower third here is going to be some sort of bar and texture. Let's go ahead and make one of these from scratch. I'm going to make a new layer and press Shift Delete to call up the Fill dialog box. And we'll fill that with the default of 50% gray. Now, 50% gray is a neutral value, so this is really easy to run filters on it, and you'll see a lot of details pop up. So let's go ahead and generate a texture. There's lots of textures you can make right inside of Photoshop, and you can also combine third-party filters. So for example, I can use something here like Flaming Pear. Let's go ahead and try this Vibrant Patterns one that they have, and this will come up and generate new patterns. Now, Flaming Pear makes a lot of great filters, and what I really like about their filters is that they'll be fully functional for 30 days. So if you visit their website, you actually download a filter and try it out and put it to work and see how it does for you. Now, cool thing here is that we can actually roll the die. So if we click the die here, it'll generate different patterns with each click. And you see that we have a lot of variety. So there's a lot of fun things you could do here with playing. And then, of course, you can actually make your own adjustments here with the mixer sliders as you see fit to create different looks. You can also go ahead and play with the hues if you want to colorize that or mix the colors overall and get some interesting looks. When you're satisfied, you'll just click OK and it'll actually apply that texture for you. So that works out pretty well. Now, to finish this off a little bit, I'm going to soften that because I don't want too much texture in my texture. Remember, it's a background, so it can't be distracting. Go ahead and throw this away because I'm not going to use that layer. And I've got this, and let's just name that bar Texture. And we'll run a filter here. Filter, Blur, Motion Blur. And we'll go ahead and push that left and right a little bit to just get a much softer pattern. And that works out really well. Now, the next thing we're going to do is shorten this so the bar is not quite so tall. We could do this with Free Transform, or we could just delete away the part that we don't want. I'm going to grab the Marquee tool and just lasso around the top part of the bar here that we're not going to use. And we could then press Delete. Now, if you're not seeing it, you want to make sure you have some safe title guides in there. If you make a new default document with the video preset, it's going to put them in automatically and those will usually show up as guides. But if you don't have them, you can actually take advantage of one of the actions in the video set. Go to your Actions panel and load up the video actions. If they're not available, just click the submenu and they'll be at the bottom there. And within that set, you'll actually have one that says Title Safe Overlay. You can click Play and let it run. And that'll actually give you a guide. So that works out pretty well. If you want to here, if the text is too big, you could change that pretty simply. Let me just trash that real quick, grab the text tool, and we'll just pick a different font. There we go. And let's run that action again. And it goes ahead and adds a title safe guide for us there, labeling things. So remember, your text is going to fall inside of title safe, so make sure you have enough bar there to hold the text. Next, we're going to go ahead and combine this with a little bit of color. Now, because there's so many reds in this here, we're going to go ahead and actually change that color. Let's just put a solid color layer above that. And I could pick any color I want. I can even sample from the background if I needed to, but that's pretty good there. And we'll set that to color mode. And it will stylize the bar. Now, you notice it's affecting more than the bar. That's easy to fix. Simply choose Layer, Create Clipping Mask. Notice that the layer indents itself, and it only applies to the opaque layers down below. We're going to use the same technique now when we introduce some texture additionally to the bar. I'm going to put a photo of climbing rope on top of the bar. And we'll choose the same thing. Layer, 
create clipping mask and it indents. I've got this laid on top and what we need to do now is blend it. So the easiest way to do that is to pick the move tool and then use your keyboard shortcut of shift plus to cycle through blending modes. There's the layer, grab the move tool and do shift plus and you'll see that I could step through blending modes and those textures are now mixing together into a new look for the bar. And I like that result, setting it to overlay mode and we'll drop the intensity just a little bit by taking opacity down to about 60%. So you see there we've generated our own custom texture and it works very well. To make things easier, we're gonna go ahead and group the bar into a single layer. To do that, select all your layers. So we'll just simply shift click and then press Command or Control G and you'll see that it gets put into a single group. We can name that bar and the advantage of this is that we can now apply a gradient mask to get some ramped opacity into that bar. I simply click on the mask button here and I can grab the gradient tool and what I'll do is a white to black gradient. Click and drag and you'll see that we get a nice ramping effect. Now in the case of this bar, it's translucent on the left and opaque on the right. I wanna change that, so easy enough, we can just select the mask and press Command I and it inverts. If you need to, you could then press Command L for levels and continue to play with the mask itself, putting more or less transparency into the bar by adjusting it. And this works out very nicely to create a bar with ramped partial transparency. At this point, let's finish it off with some quick text, and then next week we'll pick this back up and further stylize it by adding a logo using some layer styles as well. I've got some text on here. Let's go ahead and just turn these layers on. And you'll see that we're playing with it. So I've got a few things to move around. Let's go ahead and position the text here for describing the descent into the canyon, and we'll nudge that down to the bottom. If I want, we can move that to a single line and just get rid of the spacing to make that a little bit easier to see. Expanding the size of the text block will change where the text wraps. There we go. Let's nudge that down. And then we'll grab the top line here. And I am purposefully having this break the top of the lower third bar. Many inexperienced designers feel like the text can only go on the bar but you can go ahead and break that line and something different to try with your designs. And I'm not gonna use this voice of because we'll actually put this over the person while we see them on camera. So we got a good start there, but we definitely wanna refine this a bit. Be sure to join us next week where we're gonna take this lower third and go a little bit deeper with it to finalize our design. For Photoshop for Video, I'm Rich Harrington. I invite you to check out our resource blog at photoshopforvideo.com and be sure to post a comment there because we'll be giving away a copy of the Photoshop for Video book later this month. Thanks again.